Hello everyone and welcome to Unwind with Janet. Today I will be preparing the most mouth-watering brown stewed chicken that you've ever tasted. Every Jamaican dish that I will be preparing on this channel is either what I've learned from my mom or from my grandmother. And they will be very, very simple and easy to prepare. I'll be cutting out all of the unnecessary steps while still maintaining that authenticity of the dish. Because at the end of the day, my goal is for you to replicate what I did with ease. So unwind with me, and you'll also learn some fun facts along the way about what I will be preparing. So come make sure you how we do it. Here I have my freshly washed chicken and I simply use vinegar to wash mine. You can use whatever it is that you used to do before, whether it's lemon juice or lime juice, it's all up to you. I remember growing up in Jamaica, we had a civil orange tree in the yard and we normally just go get some civil orange if we didn't have any lime or lemon on the tree. The civil orange is very sour and it would give it a very nice smell at the end of it. And then as you can see, you can use any parts of the chicken. I have leg quarters and I have breast and thigh and everything in there. But if you want to use chicken breasts, feel free to do so. And I've also left some skin on my chicken because personally, it gives it a little bit more flavor to me and it keeps the meat moist even after cooking. It doesn't dry out that easily. And it also prevents me from using too much oil because the skin produces its own oil. So again, it's preference if you choose to go without the skin it's all up to you but for this one i'm gonna use a little skin on my chicken just to kind of give it a little bit more moisture and to prevent me from using too much oil in the pot here i have a compilation of all the different ingredients that i'll be using and don't worry the measurements and the names of everything will be in the description box below okay so in the bowl i have my tomato carrots onion bell pepper scallion thyme and i think the scotch bonnet pepper is buried somewhere in there and then on the other side i have seasoned salt black pepper paprika onion powder um, garlic powder pimento otherwise known as allspice and then in the bowl i have combined my um, soy sauce as well as my browning. For the different vegetables that I'll be using, you'll realize I do not chop them really fine because I know that I will be um, seasoning the meat with them and I'm gonna have to be shaking it off to, to put the meat in the pot. So I just do a rough cut of everything. And again, it doesn't, it doesn't alter the taste of it, but it's just preference. I rather do that than spend too much time shaking the seasoning off the meat when it's time for you to put it in the pot to fry. And I use normally like to use a lot of different colors. So you'll see I'm using red and yellow um, bell pepper. It's just by preference that I, I do that also. And tomato, the same thing. I just rough cut it and everything that we use, it has a lot of flavor. We use a lot of vegetables, a lot of herbs, a lot of spices. And then my carrots, I do not peel. I just scrape it. The green onions, I simply wash, you can chop it fine, or you can use a bottle and mash it. Now for my seasoning, this is seasoning salt that I'm gonna be sprinkling. And you can use a little, you can leave a little bit in the in the bowl if you choose, so you can re-season. Then I have my black pepper that you can, any amount that you choose to use, you can. It depends on how spicy you prefer your meal. And then this is my garlic powder that I have and everything is in the description box below. That's a tablespoon, paprika, the same thing. I use paprika in everything because I just love the flavor that it gives and also for the color. And then this is basically my onion powder that I'm putting in. Again, it's a tablespoon. I left some back for um, re sneezing of the pot. Pimento seed, some persons call it allspice, so we call it pimento seed. And then this is just a mixture of my soy sauce and browning and there you have it now here comes my vegetables that i have to use definitely you have to have all those vegetables in here look how beautiful this looks such a lovely color 
after all the seasonings have been added to it, now is the time to give it a good old rub. And just wanna make sure your hands are clean, nails are clean, because in Jamaica, we do not use gloves. Never seen my mom use gloves to season chicken, so I don't. Just wanna make sure that those hands are clean. And you just wanna combine, make sure everything is being combined, you know, on the chicken, and you're kinda of giving it, massaging it, and getting everything in there. Normally, I would marinate mine overnight, but if you don't have time, a simple two hours in the fridge will work. As long as you season it and get all those spices and herbs in it properly, then you won't have a problem. So after it's all done marinating, you wanna make sure your skillet is hot before you add your oil to it. You don't need a lot of oil to fry chicken because it produces its own oil. You're gonna add the pieces um, and let them maybe sear for about five minutes on medium heat. You don't want them to be dark brown. You just want them to be golden brown. Then after which you turn them over again and you're gonna do the same thing um, to the other side for another five minutes or until it's the color that you want it to. Just keep it on medium heat and at the same time I'll have my hot water ready so that I can pour it over, you know, make sure that it covers the entire um, pieces of chicken in there. I do not use cold water, I just use the hot water to continue the cooking process. Cover it with the lid and let it cook for another 10 minutes. And then after that, all the seasoning that you had it marinating in before, you're going to add all of that lusciousness right there. And then if you had any leftover powdered seasoning, anything at all that you want to re-season it with, now is the time that you would put all of that in. And then after, you just make sure everything is evenly spread. And my ketchup, I cannot forget my ketchup. I have to add ketchup to it. I always see my mom use ketchup. So ketchup to me gives another, you know, another set of flavor. Um, then after, you just basically cover. And then you let this simmer for 10 minutes. During this time, you want to prepare your uh, thickening agent. I'm using cornstarch and water, and this is a half a teaspoon of cornstarch and um, just a little bit of water. And you want to mix it thoroughly to make sure that there's no lump in it. So whenever you're ready, it's ready to go. Now, you just pour a little bit at a time just to thicken your gravy. You pour and you stir, and then you can examine the consistency that you want. Cover back for about a minute, and then after that, there you have it. This can be served with just about anything possible, from rice and peas, white rice, to the good old Jamaican yam and banana and dumpling, you name it. It's very flexible. So go ahead and give it a try and let me know how it turned out. Leave your comments in the comment box. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss next week's video. What good? Till we see you next time, all right?